everyone. Um, my name is uh, Dominic uh, Toupin from Ericsson. So I'll be talking about uh, multi-core uh, debugging. Um, so I'm a tool manager at uh, Ericsson. Um, and Ericsson doesn't sell any tools or processors. So um, I'm just here to uh, give you uh, an understanding of how we are using those things uh, internally. Um, and all those things will be uh, are in, in open source, uh, obviously. Um, so multi-core systems. Um, you have a few examples here. Um, here you have the uh, Adaptiva Epiphany uh, 64 core. So that's a bare metal system. Uh, here you have the Calray uh, 256 cores, where they choose to put it in the clusters. Uh, you have Tylera, who has been doing it for quite some time. Uh, Intel is in this, and uh, pretty much uh, all of the uh, processor vendor now have to scale with uh, multi-core systems. It's quite interesting, because uh, when you have that, you can create uh, complex uh, scenarios. Uh, here, uh, you have an example where you have a multi-core processor, where you can create, a, for example, the SSL subsystem and the network plane on the same processor. And uh, depending on the load of your system, uh, maybe the SSL is not used that much, so the, the data plane can take the three cores that could be available. So you can have those uh, um, dynamically uh, configurable uh, um, data plane and SSL uh, configuration that changes. So it's, you, you can do quite some uh, complex uh, scenario. Uh, very interesting. But when it comes to uh, tools, uh, it's not always uh, obvious. Um, um, and the tools sometimes look a bit like the donkey here, where you know, we put uh, piles of uh, cores, and he's not able to cope with it uh, anymore. Uh, and that's what happens sometimes when you try to debug those things. So when you have uh, hundreds of cores, uh, thousands of threads, uh, it's really hard to understand what's going on. Um, and that's why they created the um, multi-core visualizer that I'll show later on. Um, so some of the issue with uh, scalability is, uh, for example, if you are debugging at the command line uh, with a command line debugger, uh, if you connect to uh, many different uh, cores or different processes at the same time, the amount of event that you will be getting on the command line uh, is way too much. It's impossible to understand what's going on uh, with this uh, scenario. Uh, with Eclipse, it helps a bit. You can have some uh, GUI trees like this. Um, but still, it's hard to understand uh, which process or which uh, thread that you need to interact with. Uh, it's not always obvious. So this is why they created the multi-core visualizer. So this is an example with the uh, Epiphany uh, 64 core. So this is a physical, it's a high level physical representation of the core. So here they use uh, squares to represent the cores. Uh, this represents the, uh, the, the network between the cores. Um, it's color coded, so you can see which ones are um, high load or not. It's also uh, color coded by subsystem. So here you see that you have three different subsystems with the, uh, the, the color scheme. And you also have the load uh, for the, uh, the network uh, layer. So the multi-core visualizer is not there to replace the traditional uh, debug view in Eclipse. It's really there to uh, add additional information. So this is an example where you have the uh, uh, this is the parallel board where you had the, an Epiphany multi-core system. This is bare metal. And you had an ARM uh, two-core that's running Linux. Uh, and then you can integrate that with the uh, normal debug view. Uh, and what's nice is that when you do something uh, on the traditional debug view, it can be reflected here and, and the other way around. Uh, if you select uh, cores or process, it will be selected here. So we can have a, a synchronization uh, between the two. This is an example from the uh, tile era. So there they have uh, uh, squares who represent the cores. On the side, they have IEO memory. Uh, the dots, they represent uh, processes. 
Uh, when you see red on this, it means that uh, you have a crash. Uh, yellow means that uh, you're stopped on a breakpoint. And you can do multi-select, uh, like uh, in this area. So you can select uh, many different uh, cores or processes, and then be able to do multi-core operations uh, on them at the debug level, like a resume, suspend uh, step. That's an, an example from coherent logic. It doesn't really show well on the screen, uh, but uh, it's a bit similar. I mean, you, have a, you see the different cores. The part where you see is the active part where they are showing uh, the path of the data. So the arrows are showing the, the data goes from this core to this one, and then there's processing done at each level. It, what, what's nice about this one is you can actually modify it in view. So you can change a little bit your algorithm in the multi-core visualizer. Uh, if you see that you have some cores that are available, maybe that they are closer to the data, you can change your algorithm accordingly um, in the view. This is the uh, Calray MPPA visualizer. So it's a slightly different uh, representation because they have the notion of cluster also in there. So this is a very early uh, version of it, but it's the same principle as the other. So you see a physical representation, cores, clusters, and processes. So you can do a few things with this. Uh, one is the uh, load monitoring. So you can see uh, which cores are highly used when you're developing your algorithm, which ones are not used so much. Uh, so while you are developing your application, you can reallocate that uh, a bit more efficiently. So that's the load monitoring part. Uh, you can also do some um, work group filtering. So here, the, uh, the designer wanted to focus on uh, the four cores that are represented here by those red square. So he identified that, and this created uh, another view, this one. And uh, maybe for this designer, this represents the SSL subsystem or his subsystem that he's working on. So he wanted to focus on this one and not necessarily see the whole, uh, uh, that's what's going on on the other core. So that's uh, another way to focus his uh, attention on what's important for him. Um, so this will not stop, apparently. Uh, this is the uh, Epiphany roadmap. They predict uh, they will have uh, 16,000 cores <laughs> by 2018. Uh, and people are really trying to <laughs> understand how they will be able to debug uh, 16,000 cores or thousands of cores. Um, this is a, an example of uh, what it can uh, look like. So here you have uh, thousands of cores. And in this type of uh, view, you will very much need uh, zooming in, zooming out. Uh, you'll use the scroll bar uh, in many cases. Um, automatic is issue detection will become more and more important because, again, it's hard to understand um, everything that's going on in parallel. Uh, that's an example for the uh, visualizer zooming. So in this case, the uh, developer was interested in the intersection of those three subsystems. So you can highlight it here with this uh, red square, and it creates this uh, corresponding view. Uh, and then he can work in this view. Uh, he can also clone this view and attach it to uh, other part of the, uh, the, debug, uh, the debug view. So that's the pin and clone uh, feature. This is an example for the uh, variables view. So in this case, um, he wanted to work with those uh, three variables. So we pinned that to this uh, specific uh, thread. And then he did the clone of the view. So he created the exact same view and then he pinned it to the other thread. And while he was uh, debugging his algorithm, he was uh, comparing the data and see uh, if this was according to uh, what he was expected. So the same thing will be able to be uh, done with the, uh, the visualizer of the, uh, the cores. So that's the uh, graphical part. Um, when we show that to uh, people, they are very pleased. They, they like that a lot. 
But the second question they ask is, what about the command line? We still want to be able to do things at the command line. And this is uh, what PTC set is all about, is to be able to do a multi-core debug operation at the command line. So I'll give you a few uh, examples. So uh, here, if you want to uh, step uh, all the threads between uh, 34 and 59, so you will now be able to do it with one command instead of uh, one command per numbers of, of thread, which was really too much. Uh, if you want to step all the cores, uh, all, the th all the threads on core two, you can do it with one command here. Uh, if you want to stop uh, everything running on core uh, five to seven, even preventing new threads from being started, so you can do it here again with uh, one command. Another interesting feature at the command line level is, is the, the ability to give a name uh, on PTC. So PTC, it's a process thread core, and set, you are able to give a name to your set. So in this case, they gave the name cruncher to the core three to six and core eight, and then you can do uh, debug operations on crunchers. So in, the, in this case, they are printing the uh, global variable for a cruncher. And we will also synchronize that with the group functionality in Eclipse and debug. So the set will be a mapping with the group in the, in the debug view. Another interesting uh, feature for um, multi-core debugging is a global breakpoint. So that's when you have a lot of uh, processes that are running in parallel, and you put a breakpoint, you don't know in advance which one will hit the breakpoint. Uh, what the global breakpoint does is it automatically attach to the first one or the second one. I mean, you specify what you want, uh, but the, the different features that it automatically attached to it, and then you can debug uh, in your algorithm. Another interesting use case is uh, when you have very short-lived process. So let's say uh, uh, a process starts and it's initiating something, it does a setup and it dies very quickly. Sometimes you don't even have time to attach to those process. So that could be another uh, useful um, use case for the global breakpoints. You have the scalability as well. Uh, when you have uh, uh, hundreds of uh, process or thousands of threads, it's impossible to always go back to the host and then evaluate the breakpoint condition and then go back to the target and you know, understand if you have to break or not. So uh, this used to be the case, but now uh, with this scalability improvement, everything can be done on the target if you want to. So even the, uh, uh, the, the conditional uh, evaluation can be done on target uh, in process. Non-stop debugging. Um, Sometimes when you have lots of threads that are running in parallel, you cannot stop them all. So some of those threads, they might be uh, uh, watchdogs or uh, a heartbeat. So uh, even if your code is correct, if you stop this thread, uh, your program will fail. So you cannot stop that. Uh, so that's where nonstop comes uh, handy. So you can stop only one thread and let the other threads uh, continue while you're, you're debugging uh, one thread. So this, everything that I've showed until now is in open source. Uh, the command line part comes from uh, GDB, uh, and the graphical part comes from uh, Eclipse uh, CDT. Uh, so this is the setup where CDT talks the MI protocol with uh, GDB on the host. And then GDB, uh, via the uh, GDB remote protocol, uh, talks uh, on the target. So if you have an embedded Linux or a Linux uh, system on the target, so you have everything in open source. So on Linux, it's the GDB uh, server process. Uh, you can also have Kimu. So in that case, it's all open source. But what you can also do is to have uh, proprietary GDB stubs. So if you have a bare metal system uh, or if you have a proprietary simulator, so you can create your own proprietary stub. And as long as you uh, respect the uh, GDB remote protocol, it, it's kind of transparent to the other layers and you can reuse all the other layers. 
Um, so if you're interested in this, there's a, a multi-core debug work group uh, um, at Eclipse. So they meet uh, every two weeks usually. So uh, you can go to the address on the top and see what the current status is and you can participate in the next uh, meeting if you want. <coughs> so that was uh, the debugging part. Um, and it's quite useful to be able to, um, to use those features when you're debugging an algorithm. But when you want to troubleshoot other types of issues, uh, it's really hard with a debugger. And sometimes you cannot use a debugger. Um, so that's why you need to use some trace tools. Um, so some examples are uh, if you have a, a lot of non-deterministic behavior that you want to troubleshoot, um, if you want to troubleshoot the interaction with uh, many layers uh, in your system, systems are becoming uh, more and more complex and cloud is adding another, yet another layers of complexity into this. Uh, so when you want to correlate all those things, usually it's, uh, it's better to go with uh, trace tools. Um, in some cases, if your system is, is deployed, is, is in production, uh, typically you cannot connect a debugger to it. So that's another uh, example where you need to use uh, trace tools. Uh, so for the tracing part, uh, they are using the common trace format. So this was defined at the multi-core uh, association in this uh, work group. And uh, what it is, it's a, it's a compact binary stream uh, and it's being used by uh, LTTNG, by uh, GDB trace points. It's pretty much in all the Linux uh, distro today. Uh, you have uh, Babel Trace, which is a command line uh, tool. You can convert to and from CTF format. Uh, if you have another format, you can convert it in CTF and then being able to reuse all the CTF uh, UI tools that are built on top of it. Uh, so at Eclipse, uh, you have the Eclipse uh, tracing and monitoring framework. And you can use it in all the layers in your system. I mean, from the kernel uh, and Linux kernel, everything is instrumented this way with the static trace point and you get all those uh, data in CTF. You can add your own specific static trace point in your application uh, so you can correlate uh, all the different uh, layers. That's what it looks in Eclipse. So that's an example with trace uh, compass. Uh, there's actually another talk for Trace Compass, it's right after this one in another room, so I won't spend too much time on, on this uh, now, uh, but that's a short uh, summary of what it looks like. So future work, um, a lot of people want to integrate those two views together. So they want to have the multi-core visualizer and they also want to put uh, some trace information in the multi-core visualizer to be able to do uh, other types of trace analysis. So this will come uh, shortly. Um, they want to also interact uh, with the uh, Eclipse uh, at the command line. So a lot of people, they want to use Python and command line scripting to be able to do the trace uh, analysis uh, in there. Um, there's also some programming model concept that are coming in the multi-core visualizer. So you saw a little bit uh, the example where people were able to change the flow of data and change a little bit uh, the way the algorithm works on the multi-core. So they can take a next step and maybe put some uh, open MP or open uh, CL concept uh, in there. Yeah, so that's done uh, in open source uh, and an open innovation um, matter. So it's a nice collaboration about uh, uh, multi-core association. There was also people in the Linux uh, uh, world who collaborated a lot. I mean, Eclipse, uh, GDB, LTTNG. It's really nice to see all those things coming together. Um, and one part of it, it's because I think the, um, the evolution of uh, open source is going in a direction where it's not just a framework anymore that we see in Eclipse. I mean, it's uh, many end user companies like uh, Ericsson and others who want to have the, the complete uh, feature set. So we have a few examples uh, here. And in the case of uh, Polarsys, 
uh, that's where uh, we are involved in, in this uh, work group as well. Uh, we really see that uh, we get a lot of uh, those open source innovation. Uh, there's no locked in with a specific vendor, so we can have a lot of experts from different companies who collaborate together. And uh, when they do that, they typically get much better result than if you have one company who's trying to do it behind closed doors. Uh, so we, we, we really see this in this uh, multi-core uh, debug improvement. In the case of Ericsson, we try to uh, get all those benefits and try to kind of harness those benefits into um, having our people develop product faster. Uh, so we can reuse a lot of uh, uh, advanced features from open source. Uh, when Ericsson is buying some smaller companies, they are already using open source tooling, so it's much faster to integrate them with uh, Ericsson. Um, there's a lot of empowerment. This is really hard to uh, measure or to evaluate, but uh, previously we had a lot of our users who were quite frustrated because they needed to have an improvement in their debugger, and because it was a proprietary debugger, uh, either it was taking them three years to get this improvement or they were never getting it. And when you are in that situation for many years, uh, and if you're a little intelligent, <laughs> you get frustrated after a while. So uh, with this, it's quite nice because when they want something, we can give it to them quite quickly. Uh, they can even add it uh, themselves if they want to. So it's quite a nice uh, environment for us. Uh, there's a lot less cost in license, so we can put uh, uh, some significant budget into those uh, improvement. So it really allows us to control our destiny and to put our energy where it really matters for us. So that sums it up. Questions? No? Everything is clear? You don't have any issue for debugging multi-core? Everything is easy on that front? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very interesting. Uh, I'm interested in ACL as one of the side effects reason. We put it on lots of processes and it all worked perfectly, but we don't. Uh, what API would you like to see to enable something like this as OCL to exploit your main approach? To exploit that in OCL? We've never thought of this. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, uh, I mean, we didn't have any request to use uh, OCL in the multi-core uh, visualizer. Uh, patches are welcome. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we'll have code fragment there. We'll, I mean, th there's a, there's, I mean, there's a whole system design that I didn't went into. I mean, I'm just presenting the debugging part when you have problems and you want to debug it. But before that, yes, you have to partition your system and have different segments and different subsystem and so forth. Uh, but that's not this. I mean, this is after and you know, when you're troubleshooting it. Uh, but we can talk a bit more about OCL offline if you want to, uh, and see how how it can be done. Yep. Uh, I saw that uh, some popular uh, technology was being uh, called VDB, uh, around the VDB protocol. Yep. Were you looking into LDB as well? Or, uh, yep. Under? So uh, we did a comparison, and LLDB is far, far, far away from GDB. Uh, if you look at the compiler side, I mean, Clang and GCC, yeah, I mean, it's close. But on the debug side, I mean, LLDB is, uh, is far, far away. Uh, but if you are using Clang, for example, uh, you can still use GDB to debug your, your application. We did, a, we did a, an evaluation, but I mean, LLDB is missing way too much uh, functionality for us to pick it up yet. But again, I mean, you can use, you can compile with Clang and use GDB, so. Yeah. 
Other questions? No? Thank you.